Hey everyone, welcome to another advanced sports analytics application tutorial. In this video, we're going to be covering our 2021 version of our fast break projection system and optimization tool for NBA projections and optimization across three different sites, DraftKings, FanDuel, and SuperDraft for classic and showdown contests. Um, for right now, we're not doing showdown contests that aren't island games, uh, games that are a part of the main slate or uh, some sort of like early slate won't have showdown projections, only games that are kind of island early games. Uh, for now, we, we might change that if there is demand uh, for those showdown contests in the future. To select the teams that you want to build for, you can do so in this uh, input. So for example, uh, Philadelphia and Miami are included in the DraftKings main slate today. Uh, there is some concern that that game might get postponed. So if we wanted to build projections that didn't include those two teams, we could delete that out. In the All Projections tab, we can look at the player projections. We have listed the assumed minutes and assumed usage rate of players and the exposure that we're allowing for players. So exposure, meaning how many, what percent of our lineups at most can include these players. So the default is to allow max filling uh, if we wanted to truncate that to maybe 50%, allow a set of lineups to include no more than 50% of players, we can do that here, or we can manually edit uh, individual values and lock that in. But I'm going to go back and set to 100%. You can also edit projected fantasy values. If you think we are uh, too high or too low on certain players, you can do that. In the previous version, we allowed for editing of minutes and usage, uh, as well as other like efficiency metrics and had a projection system that allowed those edits to flow through and regenerate new projections. We decided against that for the 2021 season. In short, our projection model last year was native to the programming language that the application was developed in so that it was convenient to push those edited values through the projection model. For this year, we have a, a different projection algorithm that is uh, designed in a programming language that's different to the application language. So it's not uh, easy, uh, actually not possible to my knowledge uh, of how to push edited inputs through the projection model. So um, if you do wanna make edits rather than editing inputs, you'll just have to edit the output. You can do so by double clicking on the uh, cell and making some sort of edit. So we can edit Jokic down to 54 and maybe harden up to 53. And then we can lock by pressing Control Enter and that will lock the edited or the projected values for those players. We can also make edits to projections by downloading the CSV and making edits here. So you can see we have Jokic's 54. If we wanted to further edit that down to 50 and then Maybe we want to boost Harden even more up to 56. We can do that. Control save, go back to our interface, click browse, upload projections, and we can see Jokic's 50 fantasy points, Harden's 56. Uh, that's a good way to make edits. Uh, as well, if you want to like make batch edits or save your progress or something like that. You can also view by position. Um, it's worth noting that 
you can't edit the positional in the positional tabs. Uh, you can only make edits in the all tab, but position can be useful for, I don't know, sorting or uh, we do have filtering capabilities. So if you, uh, I don't know, wanted to look at centers only for OKC, you could type that in. Um, so it's a potentially useful way of viewing these tabs. Or if you know you're just hand building and want to focus on like the highest value players at each position uh, rather than across the slate, you know, you can do that in the positional tabs. In the groups and rules tab, you can set various, well, groups and rules parameters. So locking in specific players. So if we wanted to lock in Harden and fade Jokic in all lineups, we could do that here. You can do the same for um, captain slash MVP uh, locks and fades for showdown contests. If you wanted to set team limits, so for example, um, well, we have removed Philadelphia and Miami, um, but let's say, I don't know, we don't like Jokic and we just don't want to play any Denver guys at all. We could set our Denver input to allowing uh, a max of zero players. And let's say we wanted to lock Harden and always include Harden plus one other player from Houston. We could set the minimum number of Houston players to two. And I don't know, let's say we wanted those Houston players to only include our best Houston values. So um, we have Harden here who we've locked. We have Jay Sean Tate. Our projections as of now like is a good value. John Wall, uh, David Nwaba, and PJ Tucker. Um, so let's say we wanted to uh, lock in Harden and then ensure that we have one other um, Houston Rocket. And let's just say we want to make sure that that Houston Rocket is one of Jay Sean Tate, Nwaba, or John Wall. We could set a rule like, uh, you know, greater than or equal to one of these three players. So we do leave ourselves outs for having multiple of these players in a build if uh, you know the optimizer deems that that is you know optimal build. Um, we can have three rockets that include Harden, one of these players, and then one player that isn't, although it seems unlikely given you know, just the way the value shaked out. And then in our optimals tab, we can view our optimals. And you can see sure enough our um, rules are met, you know, in all these lineups, we can see Harden is locked. And then there's at least one other rocket, one of either Tate, um, Nwaba, or uh, John Wall. It's looking like most of these are Jay Sean Tate. And we could confirm that actually by looking at our optimals tab. And we can see that Harden is in 100% of lineups. Deshaun Tate is in 70% of lineups. So it looks like uh, the other 30% is made up of Nwaba. We can kind of just see how that uh, groups and rules works. Um, you know, we can do other stuff like, I don't know, uh, JaVale McGee and Isaac Okoro or on the same team. So maybe we want to prevent lineups where both Okoro and McGee are in the same lineup. So max one of these guys, you know, update. And we can see, it looks like the app is favoring, yeah, McGee over Okoro. 
uh, but just an example of kind of how we can use that groups and rules tab to set maximum number of players. And um, yeah, we can just download if we want to, you know, MME these lineups, we can download them. We'll get a CSV that's conducive to DraftKings upload and you can upload the DraftKings interface. We also have a late swap tab, which unfortunately I'm recording this before lock, so can't show, but it's um, yeah, pretty straightforward. You can just go to your DraftKings uh, page and look at live lineups, download a CSV edit uh, template of your lineups and upload that into uh, this upload input. I think I might have an old lineup. So this is a lineup from the other night. Um, I don't think we'll be able to generate new lineups because there are team there. The teams that are available uh, to this slate are not uh, in line with the teams that are active in tonight's slate. However, um, probably throw an error message or might be not be able to solve the optimization, but. When you have, when you're uploading an active lineup of teams from the current slate, you can click on the new lineups tab to see the uh, late swap optimized lineups that are recommended. Uh, so sometimes we lock lineups at 7 p.m. Eastern and then news comes out that opens up a ton of value for like a 10 p.m. game and we want to late swap uh, in order to re-optimize our lineups, you know, obviously keeping locked players locked, but re-optimizing among our open slots. So we can do that here. For DraftKings, the CSV uh, knows who, uh, what games have started and what games haven't based on when you download. Of course, if you download at, I don't know, uh, 7.30 and then try to late swap at 8.30, uh, there will be games that were unlocked at 7:30 that are locked at eight, but if you're doing this kind of in in sequence, uh, you know you should be fine. FanDuel doesn't have the uh, locked and unlocked games in their CSV, so you will have to manually type in. So, like for example, I think the way this slate worked out, uh, Paul Green, Bridges, Paul Reed, uh, Trey Young, Oladipo, and I'm sorry, uh, not Oladipo. Pretty much the Indiana Indiana guys were open. So um, what we might do is uh, type in the unlock teams and delete all, but leave Indiana, Indiana, and I forget who they played. Maybe Sacramento, uh, but let's just say they were playing like Golden State, and that was the only unlocked game. You would want to type. You would want to type in the teams that remain unlocked via time. Uh, and then your new lineups will generate based on those unlocked teams. Um, so yeah, that's how you work the kind of optimizer uh, component of this application. You obviously can just use projections uh, to hand build manually uh, if you're doing that, or if you use a optimizer from another uh, website or platform or maybe something you've built yourself, uh, you know, keep in mind that downloading the projections, uh, I think it's probably frozen because it's still trying to solve this late swap problem, uh, but downloading projections uh, can be useful and you know you can edit up the CSV to fit the, temp the upload template for the optimizer that you're using. That could be a useful way to inject our projections into an optimization program that you're using. Um, or if you're a fan uh, Fantasy Lab subscriber, uh, you can purchase our projections through the Fantasy Labs marketplace and have ASA projections loaded, uh, preloaded into your labs optimizer. Uh, they have some really good features where you can have um, a projection set that's an aggregate of our projections if you've purchased them and Fantasy Labs projections if you've purchased them, other third-party projection sites if you've purchased them and create a projection set that's like a 50-50 weighting of Fantasy Labs and ASA projections or, you know, one-third, one-third, one-third weights of Fantasy Labs, ASA, and uh, some other third party or, you know, your own manual projections. So 
uh, check that out if you guys are Fantasy Lab subscribers and want to use their optimizer. They have a pretty uh, sleek tool, uh, I, I, I think, and um, have found that to be useful. So uh, if you have any questions about the tool or running into any problems along the way, please reach out to us. Uh, I would say this tool more so than any other tool that we've developed uh, is iterative. We're constantly trying to find new ways to improve its performance uh, and utility to its users. Uh, so if you do have any questions or uh, maybe feature recommendations that you might find useful, uh, feel free to reach out to us via Twitter or email. We'd be happy to uh, consider incorporating those feature additions or, or help answer any questions you might have on how to better use the tool.